Welcome back, everybody. He is a very funny man. You know from House, Veep, Jeeves and Worcester, Blackadder, The Night Manager, and Avenue 5. Please welcome to A Late Show, Hugh Laurie. Nice to see you again. Thanks so much for being here. No, it's, it's a real pleasure and a privilege to see you looking so hale and hearty and, and keeping the world sane. Uh, oh, well. It's an absolute delight. Yeah, well I'm not sure if I'm an example of sanity, but thank you very much. I like the new haircut. Is this a coronavirus haircut or is this for a part? It, it sort of is a, a coronavirus haircut. I, um, you know, when the rest of the world was scratching around for toilet paper, I decided to get my haircuts in bulk. Um, and just get so out of the way I, for the year? Get, get them out of the way. So I just put my head in a, in a blender and uh, this is what you see. Nice. Um, this is actually quite long. Uh, in fact, it was absolutely like um, I, I was a pool ball for a while. Um, yes. You look mildly institutionalized. Yeah. I'm getting a little shaggy back here. Um, but uh, no, this is this is me for the duration. How are you riding out the quarantine? Where where are you? Uh, where are you bunkered and hunkered down? Uh, I am, of course, calling to you uh, from high up in the Bavarian Alps. Uh, oh, good. It's a, a place I keep. No, I'm just outside, uh, just outside London, and in a very, very gilded cage. I am unbelievably lucky. I cannot believe how lucky I am compared to what so many other people are having to go through. It's it's extraordinary. I don't, I don't deserve it, uh, but I'm taking it. Um, I'm very, very lucky. <laughs> I, love, I like that attitude. I think I think well, uh, what, what, take what it while you will, can, because who knows what the exactly, world's going to be like six months exactly. from now. Because, by the way, I am a 60 year old man. So, you know, if I, I'm lucky enough not to have it as far as I know. But if I get it, you know, sure. I, I'm in the um, I don't know what, how, what what color they give me on the demographics. Yes. I think I'm sort of orange to red um, uh -huh. as, a, as a likely candidate. But anyway, uh, are so you far, folks so color good. coding it in, in the UK? Do you have a color coded system over there? We just we they just tried it yesterday, and uh, everyone's very confused. There's a lot of pale blue in it. Nobody understands what the pale blue means. That's uh, the skin of Scottish people, I think. <laughs> exactly. If you if you go that color, move south. Yeah. yeah. Well, I'm catching up with you because you may or may not know this, but this is my birthday. I'm, I, I I turned 56 I, today. Not only do I know it. Hold on a second. Hold on. Uh, Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Stephen. Happy birthday to you. Now, I don't know if you have 5G and therefore you're able to blow this out. Um, but Let's give what, it a try. Yeah. <sighs> That's... People go on about special effects like it's complicated. It Magic. Really isn't, it really isn't complicated. I want to I thank everyone you... at Lucasfilm for making that possible. <laughs> I don't know. Do you want, sh should I eat it for you? Should I eat it and describe it for me, please? This How was this was much bigger earlier in the day. Uh, this is about the size of a suitcase uh, at uh -huh. noon uh, today. Uh -huh. but, uh, I'm it's sure you tell difference. that to all the girls. <laughs> I have no answer. It's a little dry, um, but then well, so, so am I. So are you, exactly. Yes, exactly. Well, I'm so I'm so happy to have you here. You know, you may not know this, but um, I, I have since the last time you were on here, which was like three years ago or something, something insane, something absolutely yeah. unconscionable. I've been going. When is Hugh Laurie coming back? Someone tell me when Hugh Laurie is coming back. And so when I looked at this week of the calendar, and I said, Hey, Hugh Laurie's coming back. And they said, Yes, it's your birthday. And I said, Really? What's he coming on for? And they said, I think he's coming on for your birthday. So thank you for being here. I, well, I, no, I, it, I don't know if there's anything other, else we're supposed to be talking about. I'm happy to talk about me. It, it's, a, it's a great honor to be with you on this special day. I don't, you, you are, I think, um, uh -huh. if, no, I'm not even going to guess. I would never guess a man's age. 56. 56. 56. How does 56. that feel? Uh, pretty good. Pretty good. I saw a poll recently. Uh, I don't know if it was just in America or around the world, but generally that uh, the majority of people polled think that old starts at 57. So I've got one more year of carefree yeah. youth ahead of yeah. me before yeah. I just, just crumble into decrepitude. Got any advice on the next, what I do with the next four years before I hit to 60? 
Uh, well, first of all, take care of your knees. Oh, okay. uh, it turns out they're immensely useful. Um, and without them, life is, uh, well, I've had mine replaced with uh, scaffolding poles. I, I just have no knees left at all. Okay. I, I, re I don't remember 56 as being a, I remember that being a, a sort of okay. In fact, I remember all the big landmarks being okay. 40, 50, 60, I remember that being all right. What I didn't, didn't care for is the fact that it doesn't stop. That you think when you get to the top of a mountain, you'll get, sure. they're going to give you a break. And you'll yes. have a couple of years and you can eat a sandwich or something. Yes. You'll have a rest. But then they go, no, it's 51. And it's mm -hmm. 61. And it keeps yeah. on going. And I think- Turns out oh, well, it's look, not I, a mountain, it's a gangplank. Exactly. I just turned 50. What more do you want? Uh, well, apparently they want it all. But the nice thing about not turning like a nice round number, like 50 or something like that, is that you don't have to give a speech. Like on the big part of the big birthdays, you have a there's a party and you have to give a toast back at a certain point. And I don't think because that's fair. Obviously, you're someone who hates giving speeches and uh, appearing in public. <laughs> I, I hate giving bad ones. I hate giving right. bad ones. And I never put any plan. I say, oh, I'll just improvise it. And I get up there and I just go, you're also very nice. And then I start crying. I have. Uh, the oh, but that's lovely. On. That's the best thing of all. That's the best thing of all. I, it, I, I now feel I, I, I don't really want to make you cry right now, but I sort of feel like people should see that. I think that's a beautiful thing. Just I'm not going to make you cry. I'm give not going to make you cry. I'm We've only been in quarantine for nine weeks. I'm sure it's, by our three months, I'll just, I'll just come on air and just, just snot and tears, and then, then, I'll, <laughs> then just then I, stick around for this, this, this message from your local Dodge dealer. <laughs> Now, you have played Dr. House and Dr. Chance on, on the TV, not that I need to tell you. Um, you must uh, be good at pretending you're a medical expert. How, how do you think House would respond? What advice would House be giving out of these days? I think House would have retreated to the Bavarian Alps, actually, with a bottle of Jack Daniels and kept well out of it. Um, because, you know, the problem, I mean, medically, it's obviously an immensely complex uh, task to actually come up with a vaccine. But in terms of dealing with it now, staying at home is a pretty simple, you know, stay out of large crowds. Don't don't um, go hugging and kissing the way we once did when we were young and carefree. That's uh, it's all pretty sort of basic in a way. That's what How we have to do. How much resistance is there to that in the UK? Because in the United States, there's a uh, a minority of the country, but there's a, there's a minority of the country that um, has has decided they don't want to uh, have that deal anymore. Like there was sort well, of like, well, we didn't take it seriously, then we took it seriously, then we all agreed to do this one thing, and there's a minority of Americans who now are saying, I don't want to do that anymore, and they're saying the people who still want to do it are the are, yeah. are the real trouble. Is there that going on in England? Are people well, showing a little up with? Bit. A little bit. The only thing is that, that our minority, even if it were equivalent to yours, we don't, they don't have automatic weapons. That's the big uh, distinction. Okay. Uh, and uh, so That's how just, we defeated the Redcoats. Yes, I, I'm so painfully aware. Um, but our day will come. Our day will come. Um, so I think uh -huh. it's sort of the same, except we just, we just grumble more. We're a, grumbly, we're a grumbly nation, I think. Uh, and that's how sure. we that's how we get it out. I mean, if you listen to the the news media, it's just it's just complete mayhem. It, it, everybody's hair's on fire. But I think the most people I meet and talk to, they just seem to be fairly sort of phlegmatic about it. They roll their eyes and they grumble, but then they you know mm -hmm. just sort of get on with it. I mean, that's leading aside, of course, the people whose lives have been absolutely wrecked by it. And, and I uh, and of course the other great army of people who are working day and night to keep us all idiots like me fed and watered um sure and and healthy not only like sanitation but uh grocery store workers frontline medical endless. workers yeah it's endless yeah i mean there has been a bit we we do this thing which i think you do in uh, new york of clapping healthcare workers once a week and there has been a sort we do of, it every night at seven we do it every night at seven o'clock oh every night we're yeah. doing it once a week Ah, uh, you see, that's such an English thing, isn't it? <laughs> you just you just do it more and bigger and better. Um, I'm sure you're very busy the other nights. Yeah, we've got a lot on. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and some people have started to sort of push back against that. Not not pushing back against nurses and doctors, but but against the whole idea of thanking. Why are we thanking it? It's a it's a it's an empty 
patronizing gesture and we shouldn't be and I, I don't really know I can't be I can't go along with that I, I, I feel just such immense constant gratitude particularly because I'm proud to announce uh, it's not, not announced but just proud to say that my my son is actually a junior doctor now and he's in what we call uh, A&E and you call e, uh, an ER uh, so he's wow. sort of what what we call the front line. They don't call it the front line, but that's what yeah. that's what the, the media call it. Oh, yeah. that's that, that's wonderful. That's wonderful. So you're the your house is the is the father of a doctor. Does he ever critic? Does he does he critique your portrayal of a doctor? Does he, he hasn't he hasn't yet, but I I dare say that day will come uh, because my dad was a doctor as well. So I am the both the son and father of a doctor. I am the sort of big slice of ham in the middle of these two wonderful pieces of wholemeal bread. Um, I'm the big, I'm the big fat fake in the middle and they, they were both the real thing. I think he wow. might, he might find some things to criticize, you know, uh, a few years from now, but he's, uh, he's just a first year, uh, what they call foundation year, junior doctor at the moment. So he's in, he's in his, uh, his internship. Yeah. Well, he would have been rotating, except yeah. now it's all it's all hands on deck and uh you know the er is is uh what it's all about at the moment hugh if you can just stay right there in the uk for a moment we have to take a quick break but we'll be right back with more mr hugh laurie